Today we are entitled our little study, The Home of the Same. You know, each year we make, people make resolutions and commitments. And um, you know, sometimes, very early in the year, we'll fall off the, the wagon. And others will be more persistent. By faith and by grace, I really want to, to um, I don't want to tell you Kata, I want to say welcome. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm sorry you're leaving, but come back this time. <laughs> and um, by God's grace, I want to make these words my commitment to this year and beyond. It's a quotation from the book, Mind, Character, and Personality. Mind, Character, and Personality. <coughs> and the, the sentence is that we should, or you should have an eye single to the glory of God. An eye single in everything that you do. He says, not a word should be spoken, not an action performed that would not be willing, that would not be willing the holy angels should look upon and register in the books above. Not a word spoken not in action performed that holy angels that you would not like holy angels to see are here and registered in the books of heaven he said he said you and in collectively we could say we as well we should have an eye single to the glory of god yeah. whether we come to church whether we go to work, whatever we do, the Bible says that in 1 Corinthians 10 31, it says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or what to whatever you do, do what? All. All. To what? The to the glory of God. Our objective is to glorify God. Amen. And this will influence whatever I do in church throughout the year. I am sorry, I don't desire to agree with anyone who disagrees with this. I have to, we have to stand, use the word of God as our compass. That's our guide, that's, that's the, that's how we are guided. Our scripture reading. Turn your Bibles with me. We'll look at a few scripture. Our scripture reading, and I like it better from my King James Version. It, it feels more, a little richer and special. I'll tell you. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me, Jesus says. In my father's house, not many rooms. Rooms are any little place that is, you know, just it's just, it just another place. But mansions are not everywhere. Are you with me? Yes. Mansions are special. Huh? It says, in my father's house are many what? Mansions. Mansions. Huh. There are many rooms on earth, but in heaven there are many what? Mansions. And listen, it says, if it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus said, I'm lying to you. 
He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And we could take out if. <coughs> since he's gone. He says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will what? Come, Come again and what? Receive. Receive you unto myself. That where I am, there we may be also. Praise the Lord. Folks, it's a guarantee that Jesus have to return. <coughs> It's a guarantee that there is a mansion prepared for all faithful people. And it's a guarantee that people is going there. The question is, will you and I be there? Will you and I be there? Jesus promised, there are many promises in scripture that lead us to believe that Jesus has a place prepared for us. Jesus has never failed in any of his promises. He kept all his promises. 1 John chapter 1. 1 John 2 and verse 25. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 25. The Bible tells us that Jesus promised his children eternal life. Eternal life. <coughs> Verse 25. It says, And this is the promise that he had promised us. Even what? Eternal, eternal life. But all of God's promise, all of God's promise have conditions. Are you with me? Yes. Folks, we are saved by grace. What does it mean to be saved by grace? We are saved by none of us sitting here have, should find it difficult to say we are saved by grace. Because that's the we, we could not take, we cannot, we couldn't even decide to come here. You didn't just make a decision to get up this morning and come to church. You had a choice between two. You could have gone elsewhere. But you listened to God when you come to church. Are you with me? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter how, what people think of you, whether they think you are very non-Christian or whatever they think. You could have gone elsewhere. But you have listened again and you have followed the spirit that tells you to come to church even though it's cold outside. What God promised is that this, John says, this is, this is that definite article. The promise, not just a promise. Right? But he's speaking of something specific. And John, 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 in, in, the, in very few words, get, give, it us, give, give it to us very clear. He said, this is the promise that we receive of him, even eternal life. But God's promises are not without condition. John 3 verse 16. John chapter 3 and verse 16, perhaps. The most known Bible verse in Scripture. The Bible says what? For God so what? Love the world that He gave what? His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth. Hold it a little bit. If we are saved by grace, does it mean we must believe in Christ? If we don't believe in Christ, are we saved by grace? I wish I could say to all the hundreds of millions of people that when God promised us eternal life, there is a condition to it. And the condition is we must believe. Belief is a verb. It's an action word. You can't believe means to have faith. And James says, 
James said, show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. If we truly believe that Jesus is coming soon, we have to live like we believe it. And if we're going to live like we believe it, living requires action. Right? The things that we do cannot be the same things that, that people do who do not believe it. Are you with me? Yes. We cannot live like the people who don't believe in Jesus and still claim to believe in Jesus. We are contradicting ourselves. We must live, Bible says, we should walk as what? Children of what? Light. In Ephesians, we should walk like children of light. God says, Whosoever believeth should not perish, but have everlasting life. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Be a little patient with me. We're talking about the home of the city. We're going to get somewhere. The home of the saved. Matthew chapter 7. And the verse is verse 21. Not everyone. Matthew 7 verse 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. But they that what? Do it the will of my Father which is in heaven. But we are saved by grace. What do we have to do? Nothing, right? I'm, so, I'm glad I didn't read this from Old Testament. I read it from Jesus himself. The same person who provides grace. The same person who offered his grace himself to save us. The same person who died for us. He's telling us what he meant when he saved us by his grace from sin. He said, look, not because people say, Lord, I mean you're gone to heaven. It's interesting how much people have nothing to do with Jesus in their whole life. All their life is about, about money and, and glamour and sport and the rest of it. You know, and, and, and you name it. But when they die, the others who are alive here are telling the rest of the people that they are floating. Well, you know what? They said they are floating up there. There's nowhere in scripture that tells me that God's people will be floating up anywhere. He said, God have a mantra. Did you just read it? Huh? So I'm sorry for those who are floating. Right? Because if you are only floating somewhere up there, you haven't gone anywhere. Folks, we cannot afford to fool ourselves until it's too late. We must begin to study and understand the Bible. Right? God saved us not to live like we used to live. But the grace that saves us is the same grace that sustains us. That help us step by step. We are humans. We are humans. And though making mistakes is not an excuse, but our natural, our natural life, we will make mistakes. We may make mistakes. John says, These things write unto you that he sin not. But if any man sin. Sinning is not something that we practice. Right? But if we fall into sin, we have a what? God doesn't condemn us. God doesn't condemn us. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Not everyone that says, God, Lord, shall end up. But they that do it, the will of my Father which is in heaven. Take a moment to think. In your life, the life that you are living now, is your objective and I single to the glory of God. Is God pleased 
with the decisions you make, the things that you do every day. Are we doing the will of God? Are we walking according to what we what we know? You see, it's about what you know and the attitude you have towards that which you know. Because too many of us know but we're rebellious. Others of us have limited understanding and we are doing what we know what's best. God has received us. When we get in trouble is when we know and we choose not to obey what we know. We are in trouble. Bible tells us in John chapter 10, come here with me. One more. John chapter 10. And let's see verse 27 and 28. God promised us eternal life. Promise us eternal life. It's a promise to all. But only those who meet the requirement will inherit that eternal life. The Bible says in verse 27, My sheep, not everybody, not every sheep, is Jesus' sheep. Chapter 10 and verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they what? Follow me. You don't go around seeing shepherds, uh, sheep following any shepherd. <laughs> The sheep know their own shepherd. We used to raise sheep a long time ago. Back in the island. Sheep are not like goats. Goats are determined. They are rebellious. They, I can tell you, we raise more goats than sheep. But sheep, they know you. And they will. all you have to do is to walk. And the sheep know they, they, wherever you are going, the sheep is right behind you. The goat's not doing that. Even when you have a string on that boat, pulling right, left, and all over the place. We have too many goats in the world today. We need more sheep. Followers. We need followers of Jesus. My sheep, hear my voice. And Jesus said, I know them, and they watch. Follow me. No. First, they hear his voice, and he know them. And secondly, they follow him. You know what comes after? He said, and I give them eternal life. Now, we're reasoning here or not. This is present tense. Teacher told me, I didn't go to school as much as many of you, but I remember that teacher told me that give is present tense, which means it means you give, you gave yesterday, right? Yes. Yeah. But what you do now, give you give, right? Yeah. He said, I give them every time you read this text. It's it's present. It never passed. Which means if you have the willingness, if you have the desire to read it. If you have the time to take time and read it, it's, give, it's offering itself to you. Jesus is offering himself to you. He said, I give them eternal life. And furthermore, he says, and they shall never, never. perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out oh, of my, my hand. Whoa. But before you get here, Whoa. it says, you hear his voice. And you follow him. Eternal life is not something like you that, that comes through. You buy an Amazon and you wrap it up and you give it to your friend. Eternal life is something that we receive from <coughs> Jesus as long as we continue to follow. That's a guarantee. I give, I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. He said, neither shall any man. And he went further to say, my father is greater than all. And no man can pluck them out of my father's hand. 
Church, this whole business of salvation is guaranteed. It's not a joke. It's guaranteed. And if you are reading your Bibles, you realize it's near. It is very near. Because everything that the scripture tells us that will happen when it is near, it's happening. It's happening. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 7. The Bible says here, He says, He that, He that overcometh, Revelation 2, verse 7, He that, he that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the what? The midst of the paradise of God. We are saved by grace. We are separated by God's grace to live holy lives. We can't Hollywood. We can't do that. We can't be the stars. They said, everybody stars these days. Whatever that star means. We can't be like everybody else. We are a chosen, First Peter 2 verse 9, we are a what? A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people for a purpose. The Bible says that we should show forth the praises of him who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. People are ashamed to be identified with Christ. With Jesus, people don't want to say I'm a Christian because there are more people that are not Christian that you're associating with, and you're kind of weird if you are a Christian. It's like mm -hmm. you're kind of weak, right? Mm -hmm. And there are some things that <laughs> you, you want to do. I remember um, a few years ago, I started a Bible study. At, um, couple of people and one of the guys decided he wanted to drop off the Bible study. And the reason why he wanted to drop off, he said he stayed in pain. He said, I see where this is going. We reached study number three. He said, I see where this is going. So and I don't want to stop drinking. I don't want to stop fornicating. You know, so I'm, I'm dropping off. Now, he was straightforward and honest. And he wanted to live his life wrong. Well, the last thing I heard about that gentleman, he almost died from jobs. He becomes so desperate. He told his, his parents that he's going to die. He get hooked on drugs. And he was pretty much, you know, folks, we have a choice. We have a choice. And we're making that decision now. Don't take for granted that life is going to go on and on and you're going to get, young people going to get older and just life go on and enjoy life the way they want. I think we must come to reality. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that is in this world for us to get. We don't even get anything. If you have money, it's still not sweet. Look at these people that own hundreds of millions of dollars. They have cash, they have they have values, they have so many things. And they're dying from drugs. They're dying from depression. They're dying from all kinds of things. They don't know what to do with themselves because they're not satisfied. They're not satisfied. But the Bible says, David said, Great peace have they that what? Love, love that what? Love. Thy law and nothing. 
understanding. When we reach a point when God and His promises are the focus of our life, you know what peace you have? You don't know unless you start to read it. I can tell you, I don't have any hope in this world. My hope in this world is one day at a time to live for God. Amen. I go to work, and I can tell you, I work as hard as I can work. And I look back and I said, so what? I said, all that I do is just go to work, 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 and have to keep working and keep, and you never get, seems to, you're, it's almost like you're going around in a circle. And the environment around you is just getting more crazy. So now we must live in this earth as long as God lend us a breath. Our focus should be on heaven, Amen. not earth. Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse, and verse 16. You know all the people, Abraham, Moses, Jacob, Isaac, you name them, Enoch. The apostle made a long list, and he couldn't cover all the people. But he said, by faith, they lived for God. In verse 16, he says, but they believed, but they desire a better country, right? That is, and what? And heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to what? Call them. God, their, God is not ashamed to be called their God. But he had prepared for them what? God has prepared a city for these people. By faith, Abraham was rich. Abraham was living a good life among his people. But God called him and he left. He followed God. And guess what? He still lived a good life. Following God doesn't mean you lose. <coughs> Folks, let's be wise. Look at the people who doesn't follow God. What do you want that is better than what than following God? What do you want? That if you get it, it will be a better life. Think about it. The Bible tells us, come with me. Home of the same, Revelation chapter 21. We'll hang on here for a few minutes. Revelation chapter 21. God has prepared a place for his people. And it's interesting that John, the last of the disciples to live, the last, an old man, I wish I had time to tell you that John, the fisherman, was a rugged guy. He wasn't any soft guy. I don't know how many of you are familiar with fishermen, but I, I can tell you quite a bit. In my country, there's a law that when fishermen came from sea, when they come up from sea, the police, even if they do something wrong, the police should give them, there's a certain amount of time that they should give them to cool down. Are you with me? Yes. It's a law. If the, even if they're wrong, the police should be calm with them and allow them to cool down because they're naturally aggressive. John was one of them. And you know what Jesus called John? He named them, James and John. He nicknamed them. You think nickname is not just last week? In my country, you don't hardly know anybody's right name. Everybody has a nickname. Right. But Jesus named James and John the sons of thunder. Do you understand that? These guys were rough. He, he picked some of the worst fruit <laughs> to make them humble children of God. And that is to teach us that 
the worst of us. The worst of us can become saints of God if we give our heart to Christ and we trust God. Amen. We're not too bad. We're not too far gone. You know, John, James and John, at one point even asked Jesus to call them fire and destroy some people. Because they weren't, they weren't doing what they think they should do. That's their natural. They were what? Remember, they were no disciples. They were in the church. But their rough edges, their, their, their life has not been completely gone. But as the servant of the Lord described it, as John walked with Jesus, he became so sorrowful. John, the son of thunder, become John the beloved. And he loved his Lord so much that he was willing to give his life for him. Being in Patmos, placed there as a criminal to die from depression, have no home, no, nowhere to, to shelter his head. John, in Revelation chapter 21, he said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, verse 1. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. No more separation. John looked beyond the, this, this earth of, of desperation and distress. And he saw the home where God has prepared for his people. He said, I, John, saw the holy city. The new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And, and God, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be what? Their be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. For the former, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Soon, this earth and its troubles will be no more. Too much bloodshed. Right on the street here, a few weeks ago, that a young man shot the 16 year old. His sister in law. 16 year old, I was at the shop working. Saw the lights, the police out there, have no idea what was happening. He shot her and tried to crash the car. It doesn't make sense. <coughs> Young people are so blinded outside of God. Are you listening to me? We think we are smart, but we are so stupid outside of God. How foolish is that? To take someone like it's foolish for them to be together, number one. A 16-year-old should be somewhere at home reading her Bible or her school books. Yes. Right? Amen. He's out going around with a guy. Because that's life, you know. That's what we see on TV. Right? Yeah. When you watch television, you see all these shows that are so beautiful. Oh, you're so boring. You can't watch a show. You know what the show is about? A girl taking away somebody else's right. husband yeah. and somebody else's husband taking away a wife and that kind of thing. And, they, and it is all looks so cute. And before you got the whole sense of what's going to happen after the, the wife, the all, find out and all of that, another clip. And the other clip show you something else and you're waiting to see 
what will happen? And the clip come back and it's not done, and it's gone again to something else. And you know what it's doing to you? When you open your Bible, you have no taste for it. Because those things eat away your desire for God and heaven. You're not interested in that. It eats away because to read your Bible requires you to focus. True. And the television show is, is, is wired, it's set up, it's so tactful, so that you cannot pay attention to any one thing for long. So your attention span is affected. You cannot focus. You will have more trouble even understanding your schoolwork. Now you can see if that makes sense. The Bible says, I saw new heaven and new earth. John says, in verse 4, and God shall wipe away our tears from the eyes. Verse 5, and he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I what? And make things all new. things new. And he that and he and he said unto me, Right. For these words are what church? True and faithful. They are what? True and faithful. They are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. And the verse 7 comes again. He that what? Overcome it shall inherit all things. And I will be what? His God and he shall be my son. God said, if you listen to me, <laughs> Folks, we're not a Christian because we're here. We're not Christians because we're here, you know, sitting in church. The word Christian defined the follower of Christ. The disciples were, were mocked when they were given that name. It was a nickname. A follower of Christ. He said, if you overcome, if you persist, if you bear it, if you go through all the challenges, if you if, if, if when everybody else is doing something else, you are willing and obedient to me, there's a reward. But Satan had something else. Satan had something else too. He has an offer. He has an offer. And too often, we accept Satan's offer over Jesus' offer. Right? We accept Satan's offer over Jesus' offer. I take this one from Luke chapter 4. And I'm reading verse 5. Luke chapter 4. I'm reading verse 5, 6. From, from verse 5 down to verse 7. Of verse 8, brother. The Bible says, And the devil, and the devil taking him up in a high mountain, that is Jesus, while he was in the wilderness, tempted up the devil. He taking him up into a high mountain, show him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And Luke is very detailed here. Look, it, it happened in a moment of time. Did you notice television lights? They are little sharp clips. You don't have time to reason. That's the whole idea. It doesn't give you time to sit down and say, oh, well, does that really make sense? Do you notice when cameras call people on the phone? They don't give you time to think it through. Oh, um, um, you could get this right now. And you take out your credit card and you get information and you give it to them and you say, what? They don't really need it. But you already give the information. And your money is gone. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Notice here, it says, in a moment of time, Satan give Jesus a quick he, 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 as it were, give him a, a, a quick little view. 
of all the things that he's going to give to you because you know what? It's all fake. It's all fake. That's why it's in such a hurry. So you have no time to reason. And then he says, And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. You hear that? I own all of this. Sure. Jesus, this is mine, and I will give it to you. It has been delivered unto me, and to whosoever I will, I give it. Are you reason, church? Do you notice how Jesus promised in Revelation 21 is similar to Satan's promise? He said, I will give you if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be what? Be who? Be thine. Satan has an offer. He has mega millions here. You could get mega millions, right? You could get all the girls you want. You know, you'd be amazed to see how much people sit down, how much people are cooked in all this pornographic thing, and all these glamour and all these false hope. How much people today are buying lottery, hoping to win mega millions? And if they win it, what are they going to do? And yet, survey shows that most of these people, most 90% of these people that win mega millions are worse than they were before. Their minds are messed up because they don't even, they, one man I saw, he said he, win the, he, win, he just win the lottery, the lottery. And he said, the problem, one says, the problem is I can't eat. The next one says, I'm not able to sleep. And that is to tell you that he knocked out his reasoning. I remember when I just come to this country and a man win hundreds of millions. Shortly after, they said, the wife said, I lost my husband. He was going around with prostitutes, with suitcases of money. He said, no. He's broke. He's broke. We were going to church. We were doing good. He was working. Getting a good paycheck. But he win mega millions. And I remember him hearing him saying on TV, Oh, I wrote the first two checks for two pastors. He doesn't think by doing that he's, you know, he's justified. But he become poor. Does it make sense to listen to say that? Don't you re do you realize why it's a clip? Everything with Satan is a clip. Right? Amen. Everything with God is eternal. Have a reason. Yes. Huh? God gives us a reason. The Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promises. As so many God, God give us time to reason. Yes. Are you with me, church? Yes. And the side of the devil, you have no time to reason. Huh? A guy cut you off. Take out a gun and shot him. You have your gun. Huh? You know who you, you know who you're talking to? Bam! And then you kill him. And then afterward you, you think about it. And he's so stupid. Right? God doesn't do that. God allows us to think. Because his plan is to save us, church. His plan is to save us. Get back to Revelation chapter 21. He, as we, we wind up, Revelation chapter 21. The Bible says, John says, And he carried me, verse 10, He carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. Satan, take Jesus up into a what? A high mountain. John, God, Take John up into a high mountain. Listen. He carried me away into, by, in, uh, by the Spirit into a high, mount, high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, 
and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like just a stone, clear as crystal. And the walls of and, 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 and had a, a, a wall great and high and twelve gates. And at the twelve gates, twelve angels. The names thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Verse 14, and the wall of the city had twelve foundations. In them, the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof and the city like four spear. The height as large as the breadth. I study, I read it over and over. I take, I try to do some calculation. Uh, measurements is something that I do every day. And I still cannot fully understand the magnificent, the magnificence of this church. The Bible says that it, um, the angel measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height are equal. Are you with me? Yes. 12,000 furlongs in miles is 1,500 miles. 1,500 miles. Commentators are all over as to whether it should be, they should consider it 1,500 miles around because it seems too big. And I, 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 I read some of the notes of these people. They said, you see, human, human mind is limited to humanity, to here. And it's hard for them to picture a city so large that it's 1,500 miles high. They said no structure can stand that high. But folks, the builder and the maker is not man. It's not contractors from New York, Canada, or England. Are you, are you listening to me? Yes. First, the city is not planted in the ground. Are you with me, church? Yeah. Can God build a city 1,500 miles high? Do whatever. Do whatever. The Bible says in Hebrews that the, the, the faithful that died, they look for a city whose builder and maker is God. It has 12 foundations, yet it's not planted. Like the twin tower, or no, the single, what they call it, the one word, one world, 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 world trade center, mm -hmm. or the arch de Dubai, or wherever the, the high buildings are. It's not planted like that. The Bible, John said, the city coming down from God out of heaven. God prepared that for us. And we are here losing our salvation in an effort to acquire a building made from sheet rock. Huh? Sheet rock and, and what you call it? Some kind of fiberglass insulation that goes up in flames in a second. Right? Cars that are just always a moment from an accident. And it's done. The Bible says the former things of our church are passed away. Behold, I make all things new. I never forget Fukushima. Japanese make some very nice cars. Right? Nice cars. Well, you know, church, those cars were people's dreams. Oh, they were on the lot to be owned by some wealthy or poor person. But for whoever owned them, ah, so many people would have their dream cars. But the cars were gone in such a short space of time. And at the end of it, when the water recedes, there were a pile of rubber. 
Let me tell you something. If you and I, if you and I choose Jesus, we will be a part of the city. Yeah. If we choose not to follow Jesus, we will become, a, we will become one of the farmer things. Like a pile of rubble. Worth nothing. Ready to be burned or to be chewed up in heaps and be crushed. The Bible says, finally as we close, Revelation chapter 22, reading from verse, from verse 10. The Bible says, And he said unto me, Seal not the saints of the prophecy of this book. For what church? The time is near. You see, sometimes we read these things and we we gone to live as you tell you. We're not changing our lives. God is promising us. God has made us so much promise. He said we are chosen generation. We are priesthood. In Revelation 5 verse 10 he says, We will make us kings and priests. All of what God is promising us. We're just living our like this. Those are not even important. You know? You know? You know we, we find it difficult to change our life here. I'm going to show you something. Example. Quickly. Prince William got married to what in England they call a common. Are we together? Mm -hmm. But a commoner is no more a commoner. Have we got married to the prince? Are you with me? Yeah. The commoner is no what? Royal. Does that make sense? <laughs> prince Harry is no engaged to be married, right? right? To another commoner. Someone who is in the middle of divorce. Married and divorced. But now, pretty soon, she won't be any more of what? But before she gets to Raya, notice both of these people, they change their lifestyle. Are you with me? Yes. The lady started to wear a hat. True. Are you listening to me? Yes. And when you walk, I, I saw a little clipping on the news. I make sense of that. And when she walks, she has a little thing that they do in, in curves. I don't know what they call it. <laughs> but you understand what I mean. Yes. Her thoughts, she has to learn how to live in the palace. Are you with me, church? Yeah. She's not mm -hmm. yet married. This is the place that you're going to be. And now you must practice how to live in the palace. Talk to church people. We come before God anyhow. Go, listen, we have to go close. We come before God anyhow. The royal priesthood. The holy nation. The peculiar people that is greater than any people on earth. I, I must have been losing my mind. We come before God anyhow. In any way we talk, anything, we do anything, we do it our way. And nobody should tell us anything because this is how we feel. We are the people that are preparing for the new Jerusalem. What a lie. We're not going anywhere. Let me tell you, we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. I will show you. Revelation chapter 12, uh, rock, 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 chapter 22. He said, he that is unjust, verse 11, let him be unjust still. He that is what? Filthy, let him be filthy still. The Satan is made. It's final. Everything is closed. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. It's, 
you're not like God. With God, you can't go too hard, God. Every month we will, we will, we will be paid according to our work. How we live, God is noticing how we're living. He's watching our attitude to worship. He's noticing whether we are sincere or not. I don't know. I have no way of knowing. Right. But there's somebody who sees inside here. Yes. And nobody knows you like your own heart. Right. You know if you're not sincere. You know what the game you're playing. You know if you're following others. Look at Brother Steve. If he can do that, so why I can't do this? Are you really here to worship me? <laughs> really? I have a right to set the right example. God, I have an obligation before God to set the right example. Amen. But if I, for any reason, God forbid, is setting the wrong example, I have no heaven to put you. I have no heaven to put you. Don't follow me. Follow this book. Follow this. Follow God's word. The Bible says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Here is this. He said, this is your this is passport. He said, blessed are they that what church? Do his commandment that they might have what? Right to the tree of life and enter into the gate, into, into the gate, into the city. The next verse, verse 15. All we doubt, our oh, doubts. Doubt. <laughs> we can live anyhow and go to heaven, right? We are in church so we can do anything we want. And go to heaven. We don't know if, if, if we, we don't care whether we are pleasing God as long as we are pleased. Hmm. He said, Do his commandment. Those who seek, those who are my sheep, those who follow me, those who hear my voice. I have a place for them. Yeah. Not everybody gonna go here. I cannot stand here and lie to you and say, Oh, you know, heaven is such a beautiful place. Oh, one day we are gonna be there. I can't preach like that. Because I know there's two sides to a two, there's two sides to a battery, positive and negative. Yes. And those when they connect, you get power. There, there's two sides to a kind, right? Mm -hmm. The head and the tail, or whatever they call it, right? Mm -hmm. There is two sides to everything. There's two, there's two things to choose from. You can't choose from one. It's inevitable if you have one. You don't have a choice. <laughs> I can't come up here and tell you that. I have to tell you there's two sides to life. And you can choose to be lost and you choose to be saved. And if your life is not walking in accordance with God, if you don't have your passport, your visa ready. Let me close by telling you this. Finally, bear with me. A gentleman, I won't tell you his name. From the other. He and his wife went to the consulate. The United States Embassy to get a visa. Come to visit their children in the US, in New York. Beautiful. Children are living here. Parents are getting older. You know, it's nice for them to come up, Mama and Papa, to see New York and, you know, hang on with us a little. Both of them went to the consulate. Well, you know, when they call you, take your passport, and they, once they took, take your passport, and tell you to collect it, most likely, you got the visa. That's a positive sign. Well, the wife got the visa. Husband did. But the fact that his wife had her, he felt sure he has hers too. Are you listening to me? So they both came home and everybody excited, oh, you got you and everything like that. And um, the wife opened her passport and they looked in it and said, yeah, she got it. Daddy said, no, don't look in mine. I'm not even opening mine. You're not going to see mine. He feels so good that he doesn't even want to show anybody. The children in New York buy two kids. Sure. They come visit New York. Both of them get ready, a holiday preparation, and listen, if you're from the island, you will understand what I mean. <laughs> yes. All the preparation, get ready, and get the, the taxi, take them to the airport, 
checking in to go to New York. The attendant said, you don't have a visa. You don't have a visa. The white pastor, he's gone to the gate. There is a point in the airport that you can follow your family and end that. I don't have time to talk to you today, church. When you reach that point, you cannot go any further unless you have a pass, a visa. His wife is gone. And you use your imagination, the heartbreak. He has to turn around and go home. He did not have his visa. He cannot get past here. Church, this whole business of Christianity and salvation is not a joke. Are you, are you reasoning with me? The Bible says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life, and that they can pass the gate. And anybody that left behind when Jesus called, they are dogs. They are sorcerers. They are whole mongers. They are only people that love and make it lies. I, Jesus, finally, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the church. God said, I, Jesus said, not John, I have said this to be preached in church where people, let me close here, we'll, 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 we'll finish next time. To be preached in church. Because church people have often taken for granted that we are saved, you know. Oh, we are saved by prayer. We sing. You know, we perform and think we, we have done well. But he said, I, Jesus, I have sent my angel to testify unto you these things we are. And the church is, I am the root and the offspring of David. I am the bright and morning star. And the spirit. And the bride say, come, God is calling his people. God is begging his people to reason. But we are living like life goes on, you know? Life goes on. Let me tell you, we must raise the standard. We must raise the standard. Again, I said, my goal, by God's grace, my, my, my commitment, and I sing the to the glory of God. We can come here and, and, and play party and go home and say God is glorified. We look in the scripture, we look in the Bible and we see what glorified God. We do that here. Does that make sense? Huh? We do that here. We're not like the people in the world who celebrate, they said Jesus' birthday. And everything that is unlike Jesus, that's what the world do. And say, oh, it's about Jesus' birthday. So many of us play the fanatics. 